What's up everybody? Welcome back to Vivid Iceland. Today we are headed into Reykjavik. I'm currently sitting just outside the Kveradalir geothermal area. We're going to pop into that place in just a moment. A lot of bubbling uh, hot pots, bubbling mud, that kind of thing. I think we can expect some cool stuff in just a moment. Uh, from here we're going to head into Reykjavik, check out some other stuff, uh, mainly because it's been a while since my last episode in Reykjavik. I'll pop a link to that one up in the top corner as usual. So if you're ready for it, Let's do it. Right off Route 1, about 15 minutes outside the capital, lies this bubbling geothermal area. Not to be confused with the Kveradalir in the highlands, which I've made a video about. I'll link up the top now. This place is quite literally by the side of the ring road, and you can normally smell it before you see it. It's a great little spot to stop and stretch your legs if you've been driving for a while on your way back into the city. There are plenty of boiling mud and steaming fumaroles lining the wooden walking path, as you'll see in just a moment. All right, let's see if we survive the steam bath. See how we go. Kind of sulfurous. Oh. <laughs> wow, <laughs> unbelievable. Quite warm. Some of the steam geysers are quite violent, so make sure you stay on the path. Next stop, just outside of Reykjavik, is Heithmörk, which is a little nature reserve consisting of you know, what looks to be a bunch of extinct volcanoes, a lot of cool red rock. So I think uh, I'll probably fly the drone up, see what else there is to see. But first, nice little stroll. This particular area of the Heithmörk Nature Reserve is known as Roithollar, meaning Red Hills, for quite obvious reasons. These pseudo-craters are thought to have formed around 5,000 years ago during an eruption of a shield volcano in the Brennisteinefjöll volcanic system. This area was originally a marshland that was filled up by the lava flow, leading to the creation of these incredible volcanic structures. The extreme heat of the lava which then mixes with the cool water of the marshland leads to a gigantic steam explosion leading to the creation of this crater-like formation. You may remember a brief mention of other pseudo craters which are found in South Iceland near the Katla volcano. I'll pop a link up in the top corner for that one now. We could have spent a few hours wandering around all of the hiking trails in the area, but we had to head to the city and grab some food before setting off on another adventure. Right, we finally made it to Reykjavik. You can probably see behind me there, Halkrims Kirkja. We visited that in the last episode. And just over my shoulder here, you can see the big statue of Leif Eriksson. So we're a little bit hungry. Luckily, we're starting here in the neighborhood of the gods. We're gonna pop over just across the street to Cafe Loki, grab a bit of traditional Icelandic food. So let's go. Though quite touristy, Café Loki does give a decent insight to what Icelandic food was like prior to the tourist boom. This place offers a great selection of quintessentially Icelandic dishes. There is also a great view of the church from the second story of the restaurant. We visited Halgrimskirkja in the previous video we filmed in Reykjavik, but we unfortunately arrived just after it had closed for the day. Luckily today we got our chance to go inside and check out the beautifully constructed church and the unbelievable pipe organ hanging above the entrance. This area is known as the neighborhood of the gods due to many of the street names carrying names from Norse mythology. Strolling through the streets here you can find a number of restaurants and cafes including the colorful Cafe Babalu shown here. There are many, many murals hidden down side streets and painted onto the side of buildings as well. Continuing your wander through the back streets of the capital, you can find some beautifully preserved houses dating back over 100 years. 
on the main street, Loiga Vega. There are plenty of restaurants and bars to choose from. And of course, we cannot forget the famous Rainbow Street, which leads back up to Halgrimskirka. This peculiar stone building that many tourists tend to walk by is actually the oldest prison in Iceland, known as Hengningarhusith in Icelandic. It is no longer in use, however, it still housed prisoners up until June of 2016. A little disclaimer about this next place. This is a museum in Reykjavik and it is for educational purposes. I don't want to get this video demonetized. Okay, YouTube? With that said, if you have an hour or two to spare and have an interest in biology, it's well worth checking out the Icelandic Phallological Museum, also known colloquially as the Penis Museum. With hundreds of phallic specimens, this is the only genuine penis museum in the world. You'll find a variety of phallic-shaped objects in addition to the countless specimens from land mammals, sea mammals, and even items crafted from the penis bones of animals from around the world. Don't forget the hilarious exhibit dedicated to the phalluses of many mythical creatures such as trolls and mermen. And if you're hungry after all of that, there is a small cafe here that serves great food and drink. Stepping back outside once more, we come to a hidden gem located down a small side street on the way to the old harbour area. Fischersund is a tiny perfumery boutique art installation all rolled into one amazing experience. I won't spoil too much, so go check it out. Link will be in description. Back outside once more, there are a bunch of restaurants in this area, as well as a new shopping complex, all of which are just a short walk away from the famous Harpa Concert Hall. Reykjavik is a very walkable city, and it's worth spending probably a day or two here exploring all of its nooks and crannies before you head further out into the country. Now, after our journey around Reykjavik, we took the scenic route through Kvalfjordr, stopping just off the road to explore the shoreline of the fjord. And just around the corner are two abandoned whaling ships, more on this in a moment. Please respect the area here and don't climb onto the ships as they were purposefully sunk and have now been pulled out of the fjord. So as you can imagine, they are very, very rusty and very unsafe to explore. Right, so that about wraps up our trip to Reykjavik. We stayed overnight and now we're on the drive north and to the west towards the Snæfellsnes Peninsula, one of my favorite places in all of Iceland. So you're gonna have to wait until the next episode to see what we get up to there. Now, if you're wondering what I'm standing in front of here, these are two former whaling vessels. So Iceland is still one of the few countries in the world that does allow whaling. These guys, however, are out of commission and have been for quite some time now, but it's still a pretty cool spot to have a bit of a wander around. Quite a nice beach as well, a lot of bird life and a lot of uh, what appear to be mussels or shells left upon the beach here. So we're going to finish up the episode here. And of course, if you ever need any help with your adventures in Iceland, make sure you get in touch. I'll pop those QR codes, of course, up on the screen. Get in touch with me there. I'll be more than happy to help you with your planning in Iceland. So until next time, I'll see you, I think, on the Snæfellsnes Peninsula. Bye for now.